Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're at Holmes Honda and this is the 2024 Honda Accord EX. It is a non-hybrid version and there are some advantages to going non-hybrid. We'll talk about what those are throughout the video. But today we're going to give you the information to answer the question, is this the best bang for the buck non-hybrid trim level? It has an exterior color of meteorite gray metallic with a black interior. And there are a lot of advantages here besides just the typical things such as plentiful space for driver and passengers. It's fun to drive. It handles well. It has a pretty good ride quality. You also have a reasonable amount of cargo space. And one thing about cargo space, it comes in at 16.7 cubic feet no matter if you go hybrid or non-hybrid, but if you go hybrid, I'm going to show you something you won't find. Let's see if I can do this. A little bit hard to do one-handed. There we go. Find out how single-handed and talented I am. And there is the advantage. One of them, spare tire. Because with the hybrid version, you will find that it has a tire repair kit as opposed to a spare tire because of the lack of space where that area is concerned because of the dual motor hybrid system that just takes up the space and makes that happen. So some people don't like that. Some people are still willing to buy. One thing I do want to show you while we're here is how everything looks with maximized cargo capacity with the seats folded down. You can see what you have here. Like I said, 16.7 cubic feet of cargo space quite plentiful and it not only ranges by extending into the interior but also here behind the fender wells also there's quite a bit where that's concerned after dark you do have the light right there to help keep things easy to see and speaking of lighting here on the front end you will find LED daytime running lights and Honda Sensing is also here to help out with the driving aids. That's going to include road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, traffic jam assist. All of that's going to be here. And while it's not listed under the category of Honda Sensing, you also have blind spot monitoring built into your heated power adjustable side view mirrors that are manually folding. And let's take a quick look at the remote, everything you expect to see here. And even here on the EX trim level, you're going to have remote start. I know a lot of you like that. Now you won't find the turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors. What do you think about that? Would you rather have that feature? Tell me what your thoughts are. And on this front wheel drive Accord, front wheel drive being the only option, all wheel drive not available, tire and wheel size come in at 225 on your width, a 50 series sidewall and wrapped around a 17 inch wheel. By the way, that remote is a proximity key. You have the walk away feature. All of that is here as you would probably expect. And we'll also have the nice looking taillights. Tell me what you think about the taillight design here on this 11th generation Accord. Do you like this more than what we had with the 10th generation? Here under the hood is the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 192 horsepower and 192 pounds feet of torque. It is mated to a CVT, but it is well behaved. And here is another one of those non hybrid advantages. Here is the battery. If you need to replace a battery, this is it. You don't have to worry about a more expensive battery or multiple batteries. That's always a good thing. And while this is a non-hybrid version, you're still going to find yourself with solid gas mileage numbers. 29 city, 37 highway, 32 combined. And depending on how you drive, you might achieve 3.1 gallons of gas used per every 100 miles driven. And here on the rear doors, we're going to find a comfortable armrest. More of a bottle holder, I would say, than a door bin, although it could function as both. And then, into the interior rear seat passengers will find a singular rear seat pocket, not one over there on the passenger side, but that's what's here and that's what's not here. So I'm going to show it to you. And you also won't find rear air conditioning vents or connectivity here on the rear of the center console. I don't think that's going to be an issue as far as air conditioning vents go because it's not a very large interior overall. It shouldn't take long for the air to make its way here to the rear. And then 
there are two cup holders built in to the fold down armrest. Quite a bit of space there. And one last thing, nothing new or changed, obviously, since we just saw a full redesign for 2023 that's going to carry over into this 2024 model year. No panoramic sunroof, you just have the conventional size. Some like it, some don't. I know in my position, I prefer no sunroof at all. Tell me how you feel about that subject. On the passenger side front door panel, you'll find a larger armrest and larger door bin. So those who say, I have to have the biggest armrest and door bin possible, they better call shotgun or grab the remote. And then we'll take a quick look into the glove box. Plenty of space in there for storage. That's a good thing. USB connectivity right here, a little bit of space for cell phones and whatever else anybody wants to put there. And a conventional style shifter. I think that's more popular than the push button shifter, as well as the cup holders and a couple of controls here. Brake hold mode is down here. Power parking brake. You can turn off the auto stop start feature and econ mode is right there if you want to go in or out of that. Now you'll remember that there were no USB options in the back seat area. There is a way to make up for that with this 12 volt power outlet in the center console. Plenty of space there, by the way. So you can run an adapter from here to your rear seat passengers. It won't be a problem to close this lid with that. Not a problem. That's what we have where that is concerned. And we'll also find the sunglass holder right here and the control for the sunroof. It has the tilt and slide open feature as well as the vanity mirror with the built-in lights. Hi, everybody. And let's see if the sun is on the side of the vehicle right here. That should pretty much block it all out unless somebody is reclined way back. And for when the driver wants to exercise 192 horsepower, there's the old crap handle. Here on the driver's side door, obviously you're going to find a few more switches and options for controlling things such as the side view mirrors and the windows. There is a lever right here you can drop to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Yes, you do want to make sure you put that back in place before you take off driving down the road and the steering wheel's moving all over the place. You'd figure out quickly that that was not a good idea. And the digital dash. Everything here completely digital, although you have the two analog gauges between the tachometer and the speedometer and the digital speedometer there in the center. You can turn the headlights on and see that they're on. If they're on during the day and you're wanting to turn them off, at least you'll know. But just illumination in front of the likeness of your cord right there. Here's the control for the windshield wipers and the control for turning the lights on and off on the exterior of the vehicle. And that functionality, some of you know what it is and some of you don't. I know that because I've driven around you. Steering wheel mounted controls. Can't say anything sarcastic about that. But here are the steering wheel mounted controls. If you want to see how they look, pretty easy to figure out as far as what's there. Now, one thing I do want to point out here, that flickering effect you see is not really happening. It has to do with the GoPro that I'm using to film the video. So don't say that it's a defect or think that Honda made a mistake because it's not really happening. So you can go in and make changes to a lot of different areas of the vehicle depending on what you need to do. If you need to go back to your factory data reset, there's how you do it. Pretty simple to do. Now you will need a USB cable to pair your phone. That's going to be the case. If you go with the 12.3 inch touchscreen, that is all done wirelessly. And here is what the multi-view rear view camera looks like. You can see the three different views, a nice clear view. And then we will also have the dual zone climate control down here. And for once, I'm taking advantage of the heated seat. It is a little bit cooler this morning than it's been for months and months here. Sure beats 110 degrees, that's for sure. And as far as your driving modes go, well, you have Econ. You can go into Econ mode. You can see that right here. You can see the graphic that tells you that Econ is on and that Econ is off. And then you're going to go to the drive mode, just basic drive. But if you go back here to S, that means you are in sport mode in case you're curious to know if that was actually here. So what's it like to drive this particular model of the Accord? Well, one thing I can definitely say is that it handles very well. It seems to hold the corners well. 
the seats are comfortable and they, they hug your body just right. In fact, it's not a situation where uh, it's uncomfortable, but it's not too little at the same time. The bolstering seems to be just right. At least for myself, I'm sure other people might have varying opinions on that depending on your body size, but I think there's a lot of room left for improvement where that's concerned to help people out no matter what the situation is. And so I think the seats do very, very well. And what about acceleration? We have this car that pulled out in front of us here. Let's go around them. Not a problem. In fact, I need to slow down a little bit. But that's the advantage of things like that. You can take advantage of it for a test drive to say, well, the acceleration is good too. And I barely moved my foot on the accelerator pedal to be able to quickly accelerate around that slower moving driver who I guess thought I was driving slower than I was. I don't know. Maybe they wanted a closer look at the front end of this Accord than they would have had otherwise. So they had to pull out in front of me to get it as close as possible. And the ride quality here is also good. It's surprising sometimes in some of these vehicles, you might expect the ride quality that it may be a little more rigid, but that's my opinion on that. That's one reason why I'll tell you that the ride quality here is, is good. It's not a Cadillac, but it's also not a tank. It rides well. It's closer to the Cadillac than it is to the tank, by the way, but you really need to drive the vehicles for yourself because you might be used to something that rides smoother than what this Accord does, or worse. And so depending on your typical daily driving experience, well, you're possibly going to have a different opinion than I do. That's just part of these test drives. I try and pass along information as best as I can to you, depending on what my experience is, but that's probably the hardest thing to do in one of these videos. But overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. Everything is easy to get to technology here is very easy to learn and I, I in my opinion i haven't had any experience with any honda models in the last few years that had difficult to learn or use technology brakes are good and responsive but easily manageable that's always a good thing you step out of a vehicle you're used to driving that maybe has overly aggressive brakes or spongy brakes you're not going to have trouble adjusting to the brake pedal in this particular model. At least that's, again, my opinion, my experience. You might get in and say something different. I don't know. But overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. I would definitely rate the Accord as a good road trip vehicle. It's not going to wear you out. It's easy to get around. It has a comfortable ride quality. Uh, there's definitely a lot going for it, that's for sure. So tell me what you think. Is the 2024 Honda Accord EX the best bang for the buck non-hybrid trim level. Tell me what your thoughts are and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Accord for the day. If you want to know more about this model or anything else they have in inventory here at Holmes Honda in Northwest Louisiana, check out the link down in the description of the video. I would also like to say a special thanks to everybody who took the time to watch. I always appreciate your time. If you haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.